हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू फूड टेक गीक्स वेर आई रचना शर्मा अपलोड वीडियोज लेक्चर्स टूटोरियल्स करियर गाइडेंस वीडियोज एग्जाम रिलेटेड वीडियोज ऑन फूड साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी सो एफ एस एस सी आई हैज़ अनाउंस द डेट्स फॉर सी एफ एस ओ टेक्निकल ऑफिसर फूड एनालिस्ट असिस्टेंट एंड अदर अलाइड पोस्ट हेयर यू कैन सी द शेड्यूल ऑफ द एग्जामिनेशन एंड फॉर द प्रिपरेशन ऑफ द सेम वी डिस्कस सम ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यूज विद प्रॉपर एक्सप्लेनेशन इन दिस सीरीज एंड दिस इज द फिफ्थ वीडियो इन द सीरीज वेर वी विल सी सच मोर क्वेश्चन सो बिफोर वी स्टार्ट विद आर टूडेज क्वेश्चन प्लीज मेक श्योर यू सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल एंड ऑल्सो प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू आर टेलीग्राम पेज सो दैट यू डो नॉट मिस एनी इम्पॉर्टेंट अपडेट Question number one is BIS gives process specific specifications, and you have to tell whether this statement is true or false. So the given statement is false because BIS gives product specific specifications. The presence of BIS mark on any product uh, assures that the product has been uh, confirmed according to the regulations made by Indian authorities. So the BIS gives the product specific uh, certification. it does not provide the process specific specifications but if we talk about iso that is international organization for standardization it provides the process specific certification so just remember the difference that bis provides product specific certification while iso provides process specific certification so this is a difference next question health claim and nutritional claim are two different labels so yes the given statement is true there is a difference between health claims and the nutrient claims which are there on the food label health claims suggest that there is a relationship between the food and the health like for example it can be stated on the pack that uh, this particular food will help you uh, in uh, certain uh, uh, disorders like uh, you must have seen some uh, advertisements of the Uh, cooking oil where it says that it helps you to lower down your cholesterol level and something like that so these are known as health claim while nutrient claim uh, suggests that a food has a particular nutritional properties like it can say that it is a, a rich source of calcium or this vitamin a or some other nutrient so this is the difference between health claim and a nutrient claim and both are different next question we have which of the following is the correct expansion of swama so it stands for standard weights and measure act so this act says that the commodities to be packed for retail should be packed in standard specific quantities which are being given under the rule of each commodity but uh, this particular act has been repealed by legal meteorology act 2009 so now we are not having swama in action instead of this we are having legal meteorology act 2009 and this act that is the legal meteorology act was enacted to establish and enforce standards of weights and measures to regulate trade and commerce in weights to measure goods which are sold or distributed by weights so the major uh, function of this particular act is to measure and regulate the trade and commerce which are being uh, done in weights next question we have is it legal to say this product cures xyz disease so the answer is false it is prohibited to use such type of statements on any food label that this product will help you uh in curing a particular disease so it is prohibited to use such statements next question we have food authenticity means the food should match the description as on label the food should taste good the food needs to be economical or none of the above so the food authenticity means that the food which is inside the packet should match with the description of the food which is being given on the label so if the food matches the description as given on the label like everything the state state of the food the quality of the food the nutritional comp composition of the food everything which is being given on the description should match with the product itself then it means that uh, the food is authentic next question in this we have two statements and we have to find out whether the statements are true or false so the statement one says food additives are divided into direct and indirect types 
and the second statement says direct food additives become a part of the food during packaging so the statement one is true food additives are of two types direct food additives and indirect food additives but the statement two is not the right statement the direct food additives are those additives which are added to the food for a specific purpose like we intentionally are adding the food additive to the food so that it can have a particular uh, required purpose like for example if we are adding any antioxidant to any fat or oil containing food uh, to uh, prevent its oxidation then it is an example of direct additive while indirect additives are those which we have not intentionally added but they have come in the food uh, by some other mean like maybe they have come into the food uh, during the packaging process or the during storage or during any other handling process so if that particular uh, type of thing has happened then they, they are known as indirect food additives so therefore in the previous question the statement 2 is the wrong statement because direct food additives are intentionally added for a particular purpose next question we have which is the correct statement with respect to staling of bread and the options are given it is temperature dependent it is called retrogradation it is a reverse of gelatinization or all of the above so the correct answer is option d all of the above staling of bread is also known as retrogradation so we know that the starch has two components amylose and amylopectin when we heat the starch in the presence of water the amylose and amylopectin along with the water forms a gel like structure the water molecules get uh, trapped in the uh, structure formed by amylose and amylopectin and therefore we get a gel like structure but when we cool down the gelatinized starch the amylose and amylopectin chains get disaggregated and then they again associate to form a more compact structure and when they do so the water molecules get oozed out from the network and the water molecule is loose out and that is how there is a drying up of the starch and that is also known as staling of bread so you all must have seen that when you store your breads in refrigerator the breads get dry up so this is because of retrogradation of the starch the water is loosened by the starch and it gets dry up so all the statements are true retrogradation is a temperature dependent process it takes place at lower temperature and it is known as retrogradation or staling of bread and it is a reverse of gelatinization next question we have a regulator fssci has joined hands with which organization to check misleading ads in the foods and beverages sector so the correct answer is option a that is ASCI it stands for Advertising Standard Council of India and it was established in 1985 so FSSI has joined hands with ASCI to uh, have a control over the misleading ads in the foods and beverage sectors next question we have eat right India movement is built on two broad pillars so the right answer is option a eat healthy and eat safe so the main aim of this eat right India movement is to improve the health and the well-being of citizens and this is the logo of eat right india and each color in this logo has a meaning the yellow color represents that the cereals and pulses which are required to be consumed in an adequate amount then we have the purple color which says that the foods and drinks which are having high fat and sugar and salt content should be taken in a very less amount then we have the dark blue color which uh, suggests that the milk and milk products they are needed to be taken in a proper amount then we have our brown portion which says that the meat fish and poultry are to be taken moderately in a moderate amount and then we have a green portion which suggests that fruits and vegetables and they can be eaten liberally like there is no uh, such uh, ba uh, barrier on the amount of uh, these fruits and vegetables to be consumed and then we have this aqua blue color which says that the water which is needed to be taken in a plenty amount and this whole logo is based on a balanced diet which is important for a healthy lifestyle then next and the last question celiac disease is related to so celiac disease is a autoimmune disorder that is triggered when you eat gluten and the gluten is majorly found in wheat and in barley and rye and some other uh, cereals so 
it is related to the consumption of wheat because it is an autoimmune disease which is triggered by the gluten and it is also known as gluten sensitive enteropathy and an important point related to the celiac disease is that it is not a food allergy or a food intolerance disorder it is an autoimmune disorder some people uh, get confused with this and take it as a food allergy so it is neither a food allergy nor a food intolerance disorder it is an autoimmune disorder so this is all about today's video and we'll meet you in the next video with more such important questions so see you in the next video till then stay safe stay healthy thank you